and I think we both know what men are like. Good evening. Tonight's film in our movie classic season is one of the best of all black comedies, Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. He made it as long ago as 1963, but for my money, it's still the best, most horrifying and funniest film about the menace of nuclear war ever made. You may argue that nuclear war is far too serious a subject for comedy, but there I would disagree. And when you've seen the movie, you too may change your minds, for it's the very humour that points up the horrors of what a potential nuclear holocaust would mean. Among many other things, the picture is notable for three brilliant cameos from Peter Sellers, particularly as the sinister Dr. Strangelove himself. But he was given splendid support by Sterling Hayden as a mad American general and by George C. Scott as an even more senior and equally mad US officer. Oddly enough, Kubrick's original intention when he made the film, based on the book Red Alert by Peter George, was to do it a straight drama. But as he went along, he began to see it more and more as what he called a nightmare comedy. And that is indeed what it is. At one time, it was going to be even more of a comedy, even a farce, because Kubrick's first ending involved Americans and Russians in a furious custard pie fight in the Pentagon's war room. But the director thought better of that, wisely, I think, and cut it out. The present ending is much more effective. When Dr. Strangelove opened, one critic described it as the most courageous film ever made. Well, that's probably pitching it a little high, but it was an exceedingly bold movie, which was rewarded with four Oscar nominations for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Script, and Best Actor, Mr. Sellers, of course. It won none of them. In fact, that year, 1964, My Fair Lady took practically all the awards, which just shows that given the choice between escapism and chilling but hilarious reality, Hollywood will always go for escapism. They were just as wrong in 1964 as they've ever been, for there's no question in my mind as to which was then and still is the greater of the two films, the one you're about to see. <laughs>